Hello everyone and welcome to episode 7 of Galileo Exploration, a fast progression series where we explore new planetary body every episode. And today we are going to the Telumo system and more specifically to its very little moon called Lily. We have a contract that requires us to put a very specific space station in orbit around Lily and the station you see right now on the screen matches the requirement of that contract. But before we actually do that, there is one more thing that we'll do. And this is something that I actually enjoy doing because we will put to use all the science that we've got from our previous mission, unlocking almost entire tech tree. There will be only one node left that we'll unlock at the end of this mission. So as you can see, we are unlocking the large probe course here, ion engines and all the ore mining and refining equipment, all the extra scanners and the RTG generators. Well, basically everything that we might ever want to put together a very high tech spaceship. Our station will be a single launch space station because, well, I was quite lazy, but the transfer rocket will be launched separately and will be docked to that station uh, later. The contract requires us to have um, quite a lot of liquid fuel on board of that station, around 6000 units, and uh, house at least uh, 16 kerbals and have at least 3 pilots on the station to fulfill the contract requirements. So as you can see, it's not the easiest space station contract that you can imagine, but it wasn't really hard to do. And um, this is mainly due to the reason that uh, Lily is a really small body with super small gravity. In fact, it's smaller and um, has lower gravity than Gilly in stock games, so you can imagine how small it is. But <laughs> it is orbiting a, a monster of a planet, which is Telomo. And Telomo is in fact larger than even stock game. It has 1.9 g surface gravity. Orbital velocity in low orbit around Telomo is uh, over 4,400 meters per second. Uh, likely for us, uh, <laughs> Lily is orbiting at a higher orbit, at uh, 455 kilometers. So the orbital velocity at that altitude is around 3,500 meters per second. So we're a little bit uh, on the safer side here. The injection burn to get to Telomo is not that high, actually. It's just over 1,000 meters per second. But the insertion burn, on the other hand, is a massive 1,800 meters per second. And, um, well, in our case, the lowest injection burn that uh, we could theoretically need to perform would, would be a little bit over 1.5 thousand uh, meters per second. But, uh, well, we weren't that lucky. That doesn't really matter. We had an excess Delta V in our transfer rocket, so, so that wasn't a big deal. Um, Aero braking on Telomo is actually not an option because um, the atmosphere is uh, very dense, it's very thick, and it's also um, very shallow. It has um, the, the atmosphere um, height on Telomo is just over 45 kilometers. So, with that in mind, and also coming at a very high velocity from interplanetary space, uh, almost every spacecraft that you can imagine will burn in Telomo's atmosphere. It's also highly non-linear. It's it's um, it's like EVE on steroids, really. So so we needed to actually count the insertion burn for Telomo in our Delta V requirements, because otherwise that would not have been possible. And as you can see, now we are good in uh, transit after executing our injection burn to Telomo. And uh, in fact, Telomo is a very interesting planet, um, thanks to or um, in spite of all those features, because it's a planet that is um, a very interesting uh, type of a planet that is missing in the stock game and something that has been uh, theorized to be very common in uh, our real universe, which is uh, a super Earth type of planet. So, so in this case, <laughs> in Kerbal, Kerbal Space Program, that would be rather a super Kerbin or super Gale type of planet with um, double the gravity, double the size and double everything. And um, Quite interestingly, uh, those planets, um, if life ever is found out there in the, in the universe, might be even more beneficial to harbor life than uh, planets like Earth. And um, as you could see uh, over here, uh, we are uh, doing our injection burn, uh, sorry, insertion burn to Telomo, which is indeed massive and we needed to perform it in multiple passes and correct the inclination as well. And uh, as you know, correcting your inclination is probably the best done at the very low orbital velocity so um, I um, kind of uh, set the maneuvers so um, our descending node would be very close to to the apoapsis of our highly eccentric orbit just to save a little bit of, um, of, uh, of fuel and uh, here it is um, Lily <laughs> in its full glory as you can see the insertion burner for Lily is a uh, 
for our, in our case was a little bit over 100 meters per second. Yeah, we entered a relatively high orbit around Lenny, <laughs> and our orbital velocity at that point was um, 7 meters per second, a little bit more than that. And we placed our station in polar orbit, because those, this station is almost entirely stock, but it has some scansat antennas that I wanted to use to map the surface of Lily and, um, you know, get some information about the biome distribution and, um, you know, surface features and whatnot. Once the station was in place, our uh, transfer rocket was detached and all the fuel was pumped to it because, well, the contract was now completed, so we could use the fuel that we carried over to Lily to actually send the rocket back to Gale. And uh, once that was done, the next thing that we decided to do was detaching the lander that we had with our station and, uh, well, explore the surface of Lily, which is indeed a very interesting body. I mean, um, this entire Telumo system is in fact a um, very cool system and uh, both bodies featured in that system, in my opinion, are very interesting. And they have very interesting properties and uh, features that uh, I really, really like. Apart from, you know, being um, the Super Earth, Telomo has this very small asteroid moon, which is quite peculiar. In terms of its shape, as you can see, it, it's shaped a little bit like a walnut and uh, is also very small. And um, you, you will see that uh, there is a quite interesting observation that we'll find in a moment. And uh, we landed very close to the North Pole. Um, mainly because I wanted to find something interesting and since we were in the polar orbit I thought that would be a, uh, an interesting location to land and it turned out to be quite beneficial as you will see in a moment. And next to our landing spot there was a very cool glitch that was uh, on the surface that I decided that I want to explore and uh, I'm pretty sure that this is the true north of um, Lily right here. And um, yeah, I uh, was driven by um, typical curveball curiosity and I wanted to fly into that thing. And that wasn't a very smart idea because as you were about to see, uh, our um, Kerbonaut did not make it. Yeah. But thanks to the power of Quicksafe and, <laughs> you know, um, Kerbals being very sturdy and also able to time warp time backwards, uh, we were able to, to get to the previous um, point in our mission and... Um, Avoiding this uh, Kraken-like hole, I decided that we'll go um, and explore uh, Lily's uh, surface, I guess, all um, rounds. And um, our station was obviously mapping the uh, biome, this biomes distribution of Lily, and it turned out that it has around four biomes, if I remember correctly. And um, yeah, I just wanted to, to see how it looks like and uh, if there is anything interesting on Lily. And uh, as, you, as you see... Um, Lily is very small and more observant of you also notice probably that Lily is also rotating really really fast because it is tidally locked to that giant planet Telomo and since the orbital velocity of Lily is um, over 3500 meters per second it is orbiting uh, Telomo really quickly and um, so quickly in fact that this equatorial ridge that you see right here was supposed to be probably a feature that was um, kind of caused by uh, tidal forces uh, exerted by Telomo's gravity. But the interesting thing about that is that you cannot land here. And the reason why? Because the surface velocity <laughs> that you get, the rotation of uh, Lily, is so high that you're getting an orbital velocity that is, you know, higher than the escape velocity from Lily at that point. And you basically fall up, <laughs> which, is, um, which is very cool. And uh, obviously is possible only in Kerbal Space Program because in reality Lily would just, you know, would be torn to pieces and uh, would not exist in such a low orbit. But uh, I, I find it very interesting and uh, I think it's a very cool thing. So um, there you go, um, another two interesting bodies from Galileo Planets back. Um, Telumo is in fact uh, also very interesting and uh, a very challenging destination and I would also like to go there in the next uh, in the future video and um, I've been doing quite a lot of testing for um, Telumo landers and uh, I wanted to talk to you about that because well this mission as you as you see is it's almost over the, the last thing that we needed to do was to basically get our lander back to our space station and send our transfer rocket back to Gale and uh, the next Telomo launch window is before um, our rocket arrives to our destination so you won't see the entire um, trip of that rocket we'll just execute the ejection burn from 
from Telomo uh, with our transfer rocket, but uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Telomo and uh, the possible landers that we can send there. Um, aero braking from orbit is pretty much not possible. You need to cancel at least half or maybe one third of your um, orbital velocity when you are in low orbit around Telomo with a space plane to actually land on it safely. And then um, you need to refuel and then you can think about getting back into orbit. And now I've been doing some extensive testing and I must say that uh, Telomo SSTOs are probably possible but they are not fully reusable because they would require some you know surface infrastructure for um, refueling and they are not able unless you make a really massive rocket but uh, that will be quite difficult to make an SSTO that can refill itself on the surface of Telomo and get, get back into orbit so so single stage to orbit from Telomo is possible although it requires some infrastructure to refuel it so uh, it's also highly unreliable in my opinion I've been doing some testing and uh, I had some success in that uh, regard but uh, I really don't like this approach honestly I know it's an SSTO that I don't like really strange but uh, what is possible and it's very challenging is a fully reusable mission to Telomo uh, with a space plane that can refill itself on the surface of Telomo uh, such space plane is possible that would get to Telomo on its own land on Telomo on its own refuel and then um, get back into orbit uh, with the help of a transfer rocket and that would also be fully reusable but the challenging part about that is that this kind of approach would require a uh, suborbital encounter <laughs> with a relative velocity of around 1000 meters per second which is uh, not only hard to do it's not reliable but also this series is not really oriented towards full reusability or SSTOs and uh, making a um, not reusable lander uh, space plane lander on um, Telomo is actually pretty simple and um, I must say that I haven't decided upon that which approach we should pick. I'm inclined to use a space plane that can fly around Telomo, refill itself multiple times to kind of visit as many biomes as possible but uh, when getting back into orbit it would not be fully reusable. But let me know what you think, I'm really curious to know what your opinions on the subject are and uh, we will try to work towards that. So thank you very much for watching, I hope that you've enjoyed and if you did please consider liking this video, if you are new to my channel please consider subscribing. I would like to thank another Aperture, Joe Luffin and Shrax and all my patrons on Patreon for your continuous support, that means very much to me. You can also find me on Vidme and on Twitch, links are in the description. My name is Mark Frum and I will see you next time.